Hi guys, uh, welcome back. My name's Doug and this is uh, part three uh, of my series of videos on uh, basic processing of astro images in Photoshop. Uh, and this is um, adjustment layers. We're going to look at uh, adjustment layers and what they are, how they work. Um, and then the next two tutorials after that, we're going to actually be using adjustment layers to process uh, this image, image of uh, M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Okay, but before we, uh, before we do that, I'm just going to crop this image uh, a bit more um, to bring the galaxy in a bit closer. Um, I do uh, get the uh, galaxy in the middle. Um, <clears throat> this is quite a close crop. This we were zooming in quite a lot here. Um, you, your image has got to be fairly good to be able to do this. This is quite a clean image. Um, if I tried this with uh, some of my recent images where I do much longer exposures uh, and the noise level is quite high, this would look horrendous if I zoomed in this close. But uh, this one's fairly clean, so we can get away with it here. Uh, click on crop, and uh, there you go. That's, uh, that's a little bit closer. Okay. Now the steps uh, we've performed so far, uh, which is converting to 16-bit, cropping the image slightly and removing the gradient, uh, we've performed in the uh, background layer, which is here. Click on layers, uh, and that's the background layer. All of these bits and pieces here, by the way, layers, channels, history, adjustments, etc. If you can't see this in, in your version of Photoshop, um, you can access it through window uh, and whatever whatever one you want there, just click on it and it will become visible. So if you can't see this over here, that's how to make it visible. Uh, I'm using version CS5 of Photoshop, by the way. I haven't mentioned that up to now, but this is Photoshop CS5. Um, okay, so we've performed all these steps on the background layer, and that's fine because we're not likely to want to reverse it. But what we're going to do from here on in, uh, we're going to be using levels and curves, and, and there's steps, processing steps, and we, we may want to reverse or adjust uh, because we might make an adjustment in levels and, uh, and then do other... Um, processing steps and then want to adjust that, that levels that we did earlier. Uh, and you can't do that if you're working on the background layer. Uh, and I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. Um, I'm going to go up to image uh, adjustments levels. Now this is actually going to work on the on the background layer. This isn't an adjustment layer. This is actually going to work on the background layer. So I'm going to make uh, quite a, a pronounced and severe sort of adjustment in this and show you what I mean. Now I'll explain a little bit more about the Levels dialog box in the uh, next tutorial when we uh, come on to uh, Levels, using Levels in Adjustment Layers. But what I'm going to do now is just move the black point up to there. Um, move the grey point in a bit. So it's uh, made quite a pronounced difference to the image. I'm going to click on OK to that. Uh, so that's now changed the background layer. It's what we call a destructive edit. Uh, it's actually changed the background layer sort of permanently if you like. Um, if I was to go back up to levels again now, say I, wanted, I decided I wanted to reverse that, so I do image adjustment levels, now it looks completely different. I haven't got a clue where I was before, um, so I can't just go back to where it was, if you see what I mean. Um, so that's what, he, that's what you call a destructive edit, it's actually changed the background layer. Uh, it's actually changed the pixels in the background layer and, uh, and we can't reverse it, so I'll cancel that. Um, we can take it out completely. If you click on history there, um, and that's window history, if it's not visible down there. Just click on window and then history. Um, and you can see th this is a useful uh, little tool because it shows all the steps that you've done. Now this uh, this doesn't go right back to the beginning of tutorial one uh, because after each tutorial I save the image and then open it again. So this only goes back to as far as opening the image for the beginning of this tutorial. Uh, but we've got open and then we've got crop and then we've got levels. So if we go back to crop that takes that levels adjustment out and then whatever we do from here on in that levels will disappear as soon as we perform another step that levels adjustment will disappear um, so we can reverse it in that respect but we can't make any adjustments to it or anything like that um, so that's what, that's what you call a, a destructive edit and uh, adjustment layers uh, actually avoids that now you access uh, adjustment layers through this panel up here um, these are all the different types of adjustment layers that are available to us. Um, first of all, if you look up here where it says add an adjustment and then mouse over these, brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure, vibrance, etc, etc. They're all available there. Um, they're also available down here. You see that little uh, black and white circle there, black semicircle and white semicircle. Uh, if we click on that, um, again you've got all of the uh, different adjustment layers available from there. So that's exactly the same thing, just accessing it in a different way. And we've got another one up here uh, in the Layers menu. Uh, new adjustment layer, and then they're all available there as well. So more than one way to skin a cat, as always with these packages. Um, so that's how you, you add an adjustment layer. Uh, and I'm going to uh, quickly add a Levels adjustment layer now, just to uh, demonstrate uh, how these things work. Click on that. 
and it adds an adjustment layer down here as you can see. Now I'm going to make uh, an adjustment to this layer, I'm going to move the black point up. Uh, as I say I'm going to uh, describe what the uh, levels uh, panel does in a next tutorial. Uh, so I'll move the black point up and you can see it's uh, had an impact on the image, it's made it darker. I'll just demonstrate that again if you look at the image. I'll go back to uh, where it was before and then move it up and you can see it's making the image uh, darker. Uh, okay so we've made uh, an adjustment in that adjustment layer and if we click on this eyeball here, um, click on it and it disappears. So that uh, layer has now become invisible and we're back to the uh, background. So it's not made any changes at all to the background layer uh, and that's why it's called a non-destructive edit. Um, it's just put a layer over the top and the adjustment has been made in that layer alone. Uh, if we click on the eyeball again it becomes visible again. And we can change this, uh, We can, uh, and that will, will always be available to us, any changes that we want to make to it, that's fine. Um, so that's uh, levels, we've made a, an adjustment to levels, and I'm going to add another layer now, and the way we access the, uh, the, the, the choices that were available to us before, this little button here, this little arrow, that's a back button, we click on that, and then we've got all the layers available to us again. And this time I'm going to add a curves adjustment layer. So I'll click on that. And it adds a curves adjustment layer over the top of the uh, levels one that we put in previously. Now if I make uh, an adjustment to the uh, curves adjustment layer now, I'm just going to whack that up a bit. Um, that'll do. Um, so we've now made an adjustment in curves. And you can see, I don't know if you did see the, uh, the effect it had on the image. I'll bring that back down again. And if you look at the image, um, that's how it was before, more or less. Uh, we move that up and it just makes the whole thing brighter. Um, so that's an adjustment that we've now made in the curves adjustment layer. And again, if I click on the eyeball, that curves adjustment layer will become invisible. Uh, and we're back to the levels adjustment layer in the background below. Uh, and again, if I click on the levels adjustment layer, that becomes invisible as well. And we're back to the background. So again, another non-destructive edit. Um, and if we wanted, uh, having made that uh, change in curves, if we wanted to go back to the levels adjustment layer uh, and make a change to that, we can click on the uh, this symbol here. This is actually the uh, adjustment layer symbol, sort of a black and white circle. Click on uh, click on that for the uh, levels adjustment layer, and that brings back the levels dialog box. And you can see that's exactly how we left it. Um, so we can make an adjustment there. It wasn't available to us before, if you remember, when we were doing the destructive edits in levels. When we went back into levels, uh, it changed completely, so we couldn't get back to where we were. But we can now, so I can move that back a bit if I wanted. Um, or I can even go right back to where we started. This uh, this button here, I think it's that one. Uh, reset. If I click on that, that will reset it to where it was previously. Click on it again, and it go right back to the beginning. Uh, so we can reset right back to uh, where it was previously uh, before we made any adjustment at all. So I'm going to move that up again, and uh, there you go. Uh, and again with curves, if we wanted to adjust the curves layer, we click on that symbol again, and it brings back up the curves dialog box, exactly where it was, and um, we can reset that back to where it was, bosh, there you go, um, and we'll put it back in again. So that's uh, basically what uh, adjustment layers do. They've, they've got uh, opacity as well, so this curves adjustment layer, where we've made, the, we've made the image a little bit brighter, um, this opacity symbol here, or this uh, adjustment, this uh, control. Uh, if we click on that arrow, it's 100% opaque at the moment, so that means it's, uh, you know, that that uh, adjustment is fully visible. Uh, if we bring that down to say 50%, uh, and now that uh, that adjustment we made is only sort of 50% visible, if you like, so we can see what what's beneath it through that adjustment, uh, and we've only applied sort of 50 or well, 55% in this case, 55% of that adjustment we made. So you can you can adjust the opacity of that adjustment layer by moving this slider. And if you look at the image while I'm moving this up and down, you can see the the effect it has. Okay. Now that's uh, probably better demonstrated by putting something like a saturation adjustment layer in. And this time I'm going to add the adjustment layer down here. Uh, click on the uh, adjustment layer symbol. Uh, hue saturation, there you go. And I'll put a hue saturation adjustment layer in. Uh, and I'm going to make some ridiculous um, adjustment in this, which you wouldn't generally do in uh, sort of real life, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to whack that hue right up. Now look at the image, it looks awful, um, but it demonstrates the point. Uh, so we made an adjustment to the hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'm going to go into uh, opacity, uh, look at the image, and I'm going to bring that opacity right down, uh, and you should see that uh, that image changing slowly. Uh, so it's only applying part of the adjustment that we made uh, until we go right back down to zero, and that effectively makes it invisible. Um, so that's the idea of opacity. Um, okay. Now I'm going to get rid of that adjustment layer now because it's awful uh, and we can do that in several ways. We can right click uh, and we can delete the layer. Alternatively, uh, we can, uh, we've can we got the, the adjustment of, uh, visible here and there's a little dust bin there and we can click on that 
uh, and it's deleted that uh, deleted that adjustment layer and we've gone back to curves and levels okay now I think that's uh, about it for adjustment layers really there are a couple of other bits I could cover this this white box here uh, is actually a mask uh, now I'm not going to go into mask at this stage uh, I will do a tutorial on uh, on layer masking uh, later on uh, but it's slightly more advanced um, so I'm going to leave that uh, alone for now because there is such a thing as information overload uh, and this um, astrophotography stuff is a very steep uh, learning curve and if you're sort of loaded up with too much information uh, at one time uh, you'll start to uh, not take in the information and it will blow your mind um, so what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to delete these two adjustment layers because I was just for the purposes of demonstrating how adjustment layers work and I could uh, right click and, and delete them, I could do it that way um, I could delete them up here or I could go into history, if you remember history and um, we've got all the changes we've made here we can go back to each one of them, one at a time uh, or I can go all the way back to, where were we? Uh, crop, that's our first levels one layer I hope you can see that, it's not a uh, probably not hugely big on your screen, levels one layer, that's when we put our first adjustment layer in and if I click on the uh, line above that, crop uh, and that should take us right back to where we were before I put in the first adjustment layer so if we look at layers, there you go, we're back to the background um, alright guys, I hope that's uh, been useful, that's an introduction to uh, adjustment layers um, the next tutorial will be on uh, using adjustment layers for real, using levels uh, in adjustment layers um, and then, and then we'll be doing proper edits to this uh, image uh, and slowly bring out this uh, galaxy uh, and hopefully make it um, make it look good. That's the plan uh, and hopefully that will work. Alright guys, uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll see you again soon.